Every pub is a parliament. It's a place where we discuss things. And I'm very pleased to be joined in this inaugural show in the studio pub. What do you think of it, Sir Graham Brady? wonderful pub night. That's it's pretty expect. good, isn't it? Now, we've got here, I think it's um, an India pale ale. So, cheers, cheers and welcome. Mm. Excellent. Now, that should get the Puritan screaming before we even begin. Sir Graham Brady, you've been a member of parliament for a long time. You've risen to an actually rather important position. You're chairman of the Backbench 1922 Committee, and it is uh, one of the most powerful organisations within the Conservative Party. It's one, historically, I think it's right to say that prime ministers have been quite fearful of, uh, and you hold your meetings in private with PMs, and then I think, am I right in saying if you approve, you all sort of bang the desks with approval? They do tend to do that, yes. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. No. Um, so you are really or you should be, a pillar of the establishment. I mean, a rock-solid part of the Conservative Party. And yet, you're becoming a bit of a rebel, aren't you? Well, I, I take the view that members of Parliament have a duty to exercise their own judgment. Now, of course, when we're elected, we're mostly elected because of the party that we're standing under. Yep. Uh, but there's a part of the election which goes on our own record, uh, what we personally promise, what people expect of us, especially if we've been around for a long time and people know the kind of thing they ought to expect. Uh, so, you know, I think it's right that mostly members of Parliament vote the way that their party does, but I also think it's right that when you have a profound disagreement with something, you can stand up and say so. And I disagree very, very strongly with the approach that's been taken to lockdown and the massive uh, interference in people's lives that we've had over the last 18 months. You've written some pretty strong words uh, on this in the Mail on Sunday. Um, what about the argument that we've heard from the start, from the PM, that they're following the science, and, and you, Sir Graham Brady, are not a scientist. Well, I, I, very few politicians are scientists, but we can uh, read, we can take advice, we can talk to a lot of people, and there are also some things which are just fundamental points of principle. And you know, I've said throughout the pandemic, of course, it's a serious disease, it's something mm. we ought to take seriously, people ought to be prepared to take precautions. But we also need to recognise there are some things that governments simply shouldn't be allowed to do to people. And I think the lockdowns where people were banned by law from seeing their children or grandchildren, for instance, is something that simply isn't acceptable. The idea that government can ban people from starting a new relationship, I don't think that's yeah. acceptable. Unless they're a minister, of course. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you know, I, I think we need to, first of all, to recognise what those things are that government simply shouldn't interfere in. Uh, and then beyond that, I think we need to have some very clear ideas about where we're heading mm. with the pandemic response. Uh, when does it end? How many times can you lock down? How many times can you reintroduce rules that have been lifted? I, I, yes, I, I mean, I'm worried about that. And I'm also worried that, I mean, time and again, time and again, the vaccine passport question raises its head. And time and again, the government sort of bats it away. And yet you saw what Boris Johnson said in his Freedom Day press conference in isolation. I mean, you couldn't invent some of this stuff. But he's basically saying, I don't want to do it but I may well have to do it. And kind of through this crisis, we've seen that at every opportunity, government has taken more power unto itself. So if we get to a situation where we literally, and by the way, there's no vaccine passport to come to this pub, but if we get to the position where we have to have a vaccine passport to go to the pub, clearly you'll vote against it. I can, you know, I can tell from what you're saying now and the sincerity with which you're doing it and what you've written. He's got a big majority. Does there come a point when backbench Conservative members of Parliament make a stand for liberty? Well, uh, I mean, a number of Conservative members of Parliament have been voting for liberty throughout or speaking for it as well. Uh, what we saw but, for the first... But not time, enough. Not enough, but what we saw for the first time last week was the opposition actually voting against compulsory vaccination. And we got into the habit of expecting the official opposition to vote for all of the yeah. restrictions that the government has put in place. So I think there is a, a shifting... Uh, landscape. I think there will come a point. I think increasingly public opinion is shifting. A lot more people now reckon they've had enough of living under mm. restrictions. And I think people also expect, given that we have got this very high level of vaccination in the country, that's meant to deliver a well, benefit for us. This was 
Yeah, this was supposed to be our liberation, wasn't it? And, and it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, last year we had the 4th of July, the opening up, and, and that was sort of dubbed Independence Day. Um, and now we've got Freedom Day, which, you know, is a little bit freer in some regards, but not for those that have been pinged or not for those businesses that are worrying how they're going to survive. Um, so we keep getting these promises that are made, these sort of irrevocable dates upon which our life uh, is going to become free, and they simply just don't happen, do they? I, 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 I mean, you may not want to answer this, but is Boris Johnson a leader or a cheerleader? Look, I, I, I think um, we should take some comfort from the fact that we've got a government which doesn't want to be doing these things. And but they're still well, doing well, them. So what, what's the point of... That's um, rather like saying, well, I was a leaver, really, but I voted Remain. And I've heard that argument I, made by people. I, I'm sure you have. But I, I, I think that when we look at the way that the opposition has always wanted more lockdown, more is yes, that's true. longer. No, that's true. Uh, you think what the counterfactual would be if we'd had a Labour government which actually wanted to do this stuff, uh, wanted this big power grab shift of control to the state, I think we'd be in a much worse place. No, that's a reasonable point, not one that's been made very often. Now, there are some people out there that really are getting furious about all of this, and, and I accept that the YouGov polls still tell us that a majority you know, support being very, very cautious. But there are some that are getting damned angry. And um, there's a protest going on as we speak. But isn't it funny, Graham? I mean, you think about us. You know, we, we, we kind of, through history, you know, we do rebel from time to time. And yet in France yesterday, over very similar proposals, hundreds of thousands of French people took to the streets. And not just in Paris. It was happening in Nantes, it was happening all over, um, all over France. And yet, and here's the funny thing, you have your view about lockdown and about our essential freedoms and, and, and what the limits of government are, and I'm very much with you on those, and, and, and many at GB News. Not everybody, perhaps, but many at GB News are on that side. And yet you look at these YouGov polls, and I... Sort of every Sunday I see the Member Times or the Sunday Times, and I look at bewilderment. I mean, I can't believe that this country that I'd always thought was one of the great beacons of liberty and, you know, evolving since Magna Carta, this relationship between the individual and the state that left us way freer than the rest of Europe or, or frankly, the rest of, you know, much of the world, our common law evolutionary system. Have they just all been scared into thinking this is so deadly that they have to just do everything government says and not question anything? Because if you believe you, Gov, you know, there's a growing number of us feeling like this, but we're not in the majority, are yeah. we? I mean, I, I think a lot of people have been frightened, and I think they've been made more frightened than needed to be the case. And we know from the minutes of the so-called Spy B Committee, the behavioural scientists who advised the government, there was a deliberate effort to raise levels of anxiety so that people would be more compliant. I also, though, think some of these opinion polls are wide of the mark. Mm. I mean, the one that made me laugh, I think, around about the turn of the year, had 70-odd percent support for continuing lockdown, but I think about 60% of people said that they personally weren't following the rules, uh, which suggests to me <laughs> yeah. that, that, that an awful lot so of people... Virtue signalling to the pollster, well, then. A, an awful lot of people, I think, yeah. think that they personally are well yeah. able to make rational decisions uh, for themselves and their families. They just yes. think all of the others are too stupid yes. to do so. And, Graham, you've just been reappointed, re-elected as chairman of the 22, so you're going to be there for some time to come. Um, but Boris Johnson opposed uh, this... What's he got against you? <laughs> I, well, I did, uh, Boris didn't oppose. Uh, well, they put, up, they put up a rival candidate. Uh, uh, somebody else stood against me, which they're entitled to do. Uh, and I, you know, I think uh, leaders of the party and, and government whips getting involved in 1922 committee elections, I think they all know that it wouldn't be helpful. Uh, so I don't think they do it. But, you know, there's been lots of speculation uh, about it, of course. Mm, I think you've become the awkward squad. So, Graham Brady... Thank you for coming on this first show and having a pint with Nigel. Good for you. Thank you very much indeed.